Hi, I'm Rob Penny, head coach of the Canterbury Rugby team. Today we're going to look at an aspect of continuity, which is the ball carrier, his roles and responsibilities, either going into a contact situation, being evasive, or primarily looking at recycling. Uh, we're going to look at some techniques that are going to be really valuable to anybody wanting to coach this aspect of play. The first element we're going to look at here is the long place where the player takes the ball into contact, protects the ball, and then as he hits the ground, looks to reach right back, parallel with the touch lines, narrowing the gate, elongating the tackle area, and trying to create really quick ball for the distributors. When the ball carrier goes into the contact area, they have a lot of options available to them. The first one we'll explore is just the standard side place, where the player will bring the ball into contact, keeping the ball away from the front line, taking his body to the ground, and then extending with the arms, and keeping his hands on the ball until such time as someone comes to, to clear the ball away. As the player hits the ground, what we're after here is to make the ball a moving target so the, the defensive player is not able to latch onto the ball straight away. So as he hits the ground, he's got the ball close to his body, and then as the tackle unfolds, he's able to reach, which makes it a moving target and much more difficult for the jackler to get hold of the ball. Another option when a player's battling to uh, have support players around him or is, needs to buy some time is to go to the squeeze ball or egg ball option. We'll look at the, uh, the mechanics of that firstly and then we'll go over some key safety tips once the demonstration's been completed. One of the most important aspects of doing an egg ball or a squeeze ball is the fact that we've got player uh, welfare issues to concern ourselves with, particularly around the neck. If we had come into this position, which is a common fault with doing this technique, the player looks back on the ball and if a teammate hit him from behind, as you can see there's a lot of flexion and a lot of pressure going on the back of the neck and that's dangerous. So to keep away from that, what we want the player to do is have his cheek on the grass and we want him to look up and out. And if again that player came from behind now, his face will just slip along the turf and he's as safe as houses. The other aspect to this technique is that we want the players to keep their feet splayed and their ankles down. If someone came in to clear that ball and the player had their feet in there like that, the ability for that to happen is, uh, is quite high. So what we want the player to do is get his feet out, have them as flat as he can possibly get them so when he's clearing either left or right, he's not going to get interfered with by the guy on the ground's feet. What we're going to do now is add a little bit of pressure to the ball carrier. He's coming into the bag and then he's got to have a defender attacking the ball. What we want the ball carrier to do is choose his option depending on how he comes into this contact area 
and then we want him to make sure the target's a moving target. The only time the ball won't be necessarily a moving target is if he's doing the squeeze ball, in which we hope the support players will come in behind and, and get rid of this player anyway. Good work. Right now the ball is so far away from the tackler that he can't get access to the ball. That's the benefit of the long place. In this example of the egg place, what we're trying to do is get the ball carrier to buy some time. So we don't want him to go to ground too early. We're looking for him to get his shoulder below the shoulder of the defender, drive up and maintain his feet for as long as he possibly can because he wants his support players to arrive and denying access to the guy making the tackle. and hold the ball in there. As you can see with a traditional side place, the ball is easy accessible by the defender who has yet to go to ground. So he has full rights to this and that'll either be a free kick or a turnover. That's why it's really important that we make, or the ball carrier is aware that he must make the ball move the whole time through this process and make it really difficult for this player here to have any access to the ball. So that's good. Now the opportunities for the tackler are less in terms of retrieving the turnover because he's going to overbalance or get knocked out of the way by the, the ball carrier's support players. The ball carrier's got a lot, lot of options available to him. Right now we're just going to look at a little bit of evasion. Primarily what the ball carrier is trying to do is have his eyes up, scanning, looking for the threats and also trying to manipulate the defence. So he's looking to try to weak shoulder him and try to make a breach of some sort. Beautiful. As you can see the ball carrier was carrying the ball in two hands initially and it wasn't right up until the point of contact that he changed the ball into one hand, removing the opportunity for the defender to get close to the ball and also giving him a fend option. A couple of key factors that you need to remember when you're teaching a player to come take the ball into contact is as they're approaching the contact areas, try to increase their speed as much as possible. We have a term, ignite the turbos. Really try to generate that pace. Because at worst, he'll be able to dominate that collision because he's going faster than the opposing player. Another thing is try to get his shoulder below the shoulder of the defensive player. We just say shoulder below shoulder. That allows him to go from a, a, a low position to a high position. As if you could imagine a plane taking off instead of landing, we want that player to be able to dominate this area from a low to high and igniting those turbos and generating momentum. That's right. An element of continuity we're going to look at now is the ball carrier standing in the tackle and offloading to a support player. We just call it stand and deliver. Being able to brace yourself and be strong while you're dominating and controlling the defender and waiting for your support to arrive and giving them an offload. The approach by the ball carrier is exactly the same as he would be doing if he was looking to evade the defender. But at the last instant, instead of trying to fend off the defender, he actually grabs hold of the defender with a straight arm and controls him until such time as the support player arrives. You'll notice that the elbow is locked out to keep the defender as far away as he can, and the footwork is he's wide base and braced so he can't be flipped to the ground or dropped. We've also got the opportunity to give a pass out the back door. Okay, That's why we need to have that strong grip on the ball, control that defender, and our support player this time will come from the other side. He's got the ability to release to him running down that channel. The support player has numerous decisions to make over a very short period of time. Initially their formation will be as a ball carrier, carrier support player for them to offload to. But as the ball carrier gets closer and closer to that contact area with the defence, his role changes. He either is going to attach to the ball carrier as he enters that contact area and turns two legs into four legs and possibly into six legs and we've got a maul, or he's going to be um, 
shielding the, the ball carrier or going past the ball carrier to prevent the defensive threats coming in and getting access to the ball, which we term as a cleaner. Alternatively, if, if there's a bit of a build-up of bodies and it's preventing the ball from coming out, he may enter that breakdown area and become a body mover, trying to move bodies out of the way so he can uh, free up the ball for access to other players. A couple of key points here for the cleaner is that he's got his eyes up and scanning for the threats as he's approaching the breakdown. Once the tackle's been affected and the ball carrier's gone to deck, got low body position, got good arm wrap, and he tackles that defensive threat out of that contact area from a low position to a high position, dominating that collision area. What we're looking for here is the support players of the ball carrier to clean the defenders with their head on the outside, locking those defenders into a tight group behind the ball carrier, not allowing them to filter out and become defenders of the next wave of attack. What we're looking at next is an element of the game when the ball's gone really wide and there may be more defenders around a winger or an outside back and he may have to buy a little bit of time for his support players to get there who may have run off different angles on him trying to create an offload opportunity and haven't got enough time to get back to him yet. So what we look to do is get the, the player to buy some time by getting into that egg position, shoulder below shoulder, leg drive, going down and squeezing the ball out and the first support player there basically steps right over top of his body, latches on or vices on to the player below him's jersey, has his eyes up and waiting for the advancing defenders to hit him. Yeah, that's right. As you can see, this player has come to a point where he is now able to protect the guy on the ground and protect the ball in behind. If an opposition player engages this player, we've got a ruck. Ball on the ground, a player from each team uh, bound over the ball constitutes a ruck, which gives us an offside line. As you can see, this player is using the body weight of the player on the ground to prevent him from being knocked off his feet. Very strong, powerful position, low body position, head up, still looking at the threats coming in, and if someone did come in, he's bracing himself ready for the impact. When the ball is distributed out wide in this situation, normally the defence only has one or two little goes at this, and if they're not successful in disrupting this setup, they'll fan out and be defenders and our ball is able to be recycled and we're safe. Another important aspect of the support player's role is if the ball comes out and they're arriving late to the breakdown, they become the halfback and have to distribute to the next wave of attack. What we're looking to do here is turn the ball carrier's two legs into the support player's four and six legs. As you can see, the, the support players are latching onto the ball carrier just prior to or as the ball carrier is going into contact, and they're looking to get their shoulders level with the ball carriers or beyond, so that they're actually engaging the defensive threats and protecting the ball carrier.